so friends in this video uh, we are going to see different types of uh, skills that you will need to crack automation interview so here you can see that uh, we have got a typical uh, automation tester role where they are looking for a person with these skills they need someone who knows git github then java cradle in the front end they need a selenium person then there is an api testing as well which involves postman performance testing uh, is also involved there uh, they need the chameter then jenkins is also there in that project and then messaging queue so let us start one by one so let us start with the git and github so in the git what kind of questions they can ask is how do you clone the repository okay so this is the basic thing that you need to know so there are uh, three ways basically to clone the repository one is using command line and in command line there are two ways and uh, other is graphical interface based so in command line there are two ways in which you can download or clone the repository the first one is using the ssh protocol as you can see this is the syntax to use the ssh protocol git clone and then the ssh url after this uh, there is a http based way to clone the repository where we are using the https protocol okay uh, so only difference between these two is that in https you will need to use the password to authenticate uh, otherwise in ssh we use ssh keys and uh, the way to create the ssh keys is by using this command called as ssh key gen which generates the public and private uh, key and uh, you have to save this public key uh, on the server so if you're using github gitlab or stash, git stash whatever it is whatever server you are using to store the git repository you have to store that public key over there and once that is there uh, the ssh connection will be established and then you can clone the repository using uh, this command git clone then git repository url that's it then you can go to the specific uh, project and then you can execute the commands the rest of the commands the next important question that they might be asking is the committing the changes so we can use the git commit command then dash m and then the message git uh, commit message so you can put that so what happens is that everything that is staged will be uh, everything that is in the staging area will be uh, committed okay and then uh, in the next push command that will be pushed to the remote server then uh, another important concept uh, here is that git ignore file so whatever things you want to ignore whatever files for the folders you want to ignore in your project can be put into this particular file dot git ignore so basically what it does is that it will not track those files so for example uh, if you're using maven project you can put these directories target slash log slash so what happens is that all the files in those directories will be ignored by the git then uh, you should also know how to view the git history so there is a git log command that can be used to look at the history of the git so basically it shows all the commits that have happened in that particular repository or the branch basically and you can see here it is showing the author date commit message commit hash id as well is being displayed and then this git lock uh, command has got different options that you can use so for example if you want to just look at last three commits you can use dash three dash two like that if you want to look at the commits made by a specific author or you can use author and then you can also restrict it to the time specific time as well using after and before options and there are a lot of other options available in the git log then to view the differences between files you can use git diff and then based on the options it will check the differences between the two files or you can also use the graphical interface to check the differences using git k command and then file name so basically it will show you the differences or the changes that have happened in that particular file then git revert and re reset so what's the difference between these two so in git revert what happens is that the the commits that have happened they are untouched so basically in git reward what happens is that no commits will be deleted but in git reset the commits 
that are there in the repository will be deleted on the branch will be deleted but um, in git revert uh, the existing commits will be untouched what happens is that the new commit is added and what happens is that the commits that you don't want will be those changes will be wiped out but the commits will still be there so if someone looks at the history of that particular repository they can still see those commits in there but in git reset those commits are completely removed then uh, next important thing is uh, working with the branches and resolving con conflicts so to create new branches you can use the command called as git branch and then to check out again is git checkout okay so here we are creating the branch x and then checking it out or you can also create a new branch and then check out at the same in the same command using this command called as git checkout dash b b2 so it will create a new branch b2 and then check it out at the same time and then uh, merging the branches you can use git merge command then there is a resolving conflicts that is also another important thing especially when you pull the changes those changes will be uh, displayed so if a file has changed in your local as well as in the remote then in the local changes will be shown in this line and the remote changes are displayed in these lines so that way you can see what changes have happened and based upon that you can talk to that person and then resolve those conflicts i think this is enough for the git next uh, let us move on to the next topic so that is gradle and java so in any automation job you will need to be proficient in a specific language so it can be javascript java c sharp dot net whatever it may be python so one of the language is really important because uh, it's not necessary that if the let us say this particular interview is for the java but you may be proficient in other language say for example python or c sharp dot net so you can tell them that it's fine i don't know java but i have worked in these languages and it will be easy for me to work on java because say for example c sharp dot net is also a object oriented language and the syntax is also a lot of similarities between java and c sharp dot net so that way you can explain them that yes i am confident uh, of working on the java as well so in that uh, some basic concepts or the common concepts of object oriented programming you must know and we are going to have a look at those concepts right now so in java we have got some important concepts uh, over here for example uh, in the modifiers you must know what's the difference between this public protected private and default modifiers so if you say a member is public in a class what happens is that that member can be accessed from outside of the class so even if it is not in the same package they can still access that particular member if it is public if it is default then the access is restricted only to those classes that are in the same package but if you are accessing trying to access uh, that member from outside of the package then no you will not be given the access the next one is protected so protected is a little bit different so in that what happens is that you can access that one member is from outside of the package outside of the class but only condition is that the other class has to inherit uh, the parent class then only they can access those members so protect the members and private is very simple nobody can access those members except the methods in that specific class so that is private members next one is object oriented concepts so in object oriented concepts uh, they can ask what's different between object and class what's packages what is interfaces what is inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation and enum so in object and class what's the difference between these two class is a blueprint and object is a actual real thing so for example we can say that the person came and then uh, say open the door we don't know what person it is so when something is abstract something is not a specific thing then we can say it is a it is a class so in this in this case person is a class but when we say specific person then that becomes an object okay so class is a blueprint while object is the real thing so something that we store in the memory 
the package is used uh, its concept used to group or um, group the similar kind of things so for example classes or interfaces if you want to club together you can put it in the package so for example java.math package is there where we can store all the things related to the mathematical operations so all the classes interfaces associated with the mathematics can be put into the same package and similarly say date and time they, that can have different package so so package is basically grouping things then interface and interface inheritance so interface is again similar to the class we can say only difference is that uh, interfaces have only the declarations we just specify what has to be done we don't specify how it has to be done so class that implements the interface will define the behavior the inheritance concept is also very common in object oriented programming fair uh, to avoid the duplicate code we can use the inheritance so for example a person can be a doctor can be a uh, sports person as well so they can have name each person has name so the name thing can be put into the parent class and then the other classes can inherit that name so basically that is how inheritance works in the polymorphism uh, different objects can be have differently based upon how they are created so we can have a car and then there are different cars like electric and petrol cars so they both can have the same method say drive okay but the way the electric vehicles are driven are different and then the way petrol vehicles are driven this that is different so we can have these two things uh, two methods basically uh, implementation of the try method can be different based upon how that object is created so that is called as polymorphism in the abstraction uh, we it is similar to the interfaces where we don't specify how the things have to be done we just specify that the some things are to be done so that is called as abstraction the next thing is encapsulation where we bundle together the similar things like the in the class we have the members the fields basically and then the methods that work on those fields operations so that is called as encapsulation so if you have private members nothing can be they can be can't be accessed from outside of that particular class so that is called as encapsulation then the enum is there so in enum what happens is that the the constant things uh, that we normally use so for example shirts can be small or medium large size so those we can create a constant associated with those names and then they, they are called as enums because that improves the programming instead of saying 0 1 2 we can have this small medium large which is more user friendly the next important concept is about the boxing and boxing so in boxing and boxing what happens is that uh, there are primitive types and then there is a object or the reference type so what happens is that um, integers or the strings they are called as primitives because um, they don't have the properties or methods associated with them they are just stored on the stack not on the hip and what happens is that if you want to access those uh, methods then you will have to convert those primitives into the object so for example a number number is a primitive but you can convert it to the number class using boxing concept and the, the reverse concept is called as unboxing where the objects are converted into the primitives after this uh, there is a string buffer and a string builder so main difference between string and the these two classes is that a string is immutable in java so you can't modify the string but you can modify string buffer and string builders but the difference between the string buffer and the string builder is that string buffer is a synchronized synchronized class so what it means is that when multiple threads are working on the objects of this particular class there is a thread safety okay in string builder there is no thread safety so that is the only difference between these two then there is uh, this thing called as how to load properties file which is frequently used in automation testing so to load specific uh, properties file what you can do is 
you can use this particular code where we are using this properties class from java util and then we are using this class loader dot get system resource as a stream where resource name is environment dot properties and then we are using this props dot load and a resource stream so basically this load method is gonna create those properties for us and then we can use props dot get property to access the values then there is a log for g so log for g is a framework logging framework which can be used to log the data so here is a configuration file typical configuration file here we have to specify the logging level so it can be info debug etc and then we have the appender so appender is basically the way uh, we want to store that logs so logs can be stored for example files or it can be stored on the output stream so in this particular thing we are storing in the file in this particular configuration we are uh, sending it to the output stream so uh, we can have the logs going into the two different things at the same time like in this case we are sending the logs to the files as well as to the standard output stream as well so i think uh, that's all uh, that you need to know about the java as a programming language from the interview perspective the next one is uh, front end testing selenium so in the selenium it's a very very easy api that selenium provides where we have web drivers and then there are methods to navigate then go to url and then to get uh, different uh, values from the object for example to get the text and then uh, to select the text uh, from the uh, drop down to interact with the various elements to click on the element so all these operations that you, methods you can use in the selenium and uh, important thing is how the synchronization works there is explicit implicit synchronization in selenium that you need to know i think that's it in selenium uh, there is nothing that is very difficult i'll say if you know or you have worked on a, a, even a single project you must have got a clear idea like what kind of api selenium has got next one is postman or the api testing so api testing is a, a really important thing nowadays in most of the projects you will see this and postman is one of the popular tool to do the api testing so apart from that there is a ready api soap ui and lots of other tools as well but postman is uh, very popular among them and uh, also working with postman is very simple basically so you will need to understand how the http protocol works so that is very important in case of the api testing as well as performance testing so i'm gonna uh, give a brief overview of the http protocol before we move to the Jenkins and kafka so let us go to the http protocol now so here you can see uh, this here we are given like very important information about the http protocol so here you can see that uh, we have got these uh, versions of the http protocol so recently in 2022 we have got different protocol called http 3 where we are not using the tcp but tcp has been replaced with quick protocol okay until now in 2015 or even 2021 we were using the tcp connections to get and uh, send the data but now in the latest version of tcp we are uh, latest version of the http protocol we are using the quick okay where bi-direction streaming is being used so basically main purpose being to get the faster data transfer okay that is the only uh, only reason why they are chasing new protocols next uh, difference is headers are compressed and sent in the binary format in case of http3 protocols and hol completely removed head of line there is one issue with the other protocols called as hol blocking which doesn't exist in the http3 protocol next one we have given the sample http post and get requests so normally in uh, every http post request we are going to have this particular uh, structure basically where we have the first line as the http for followed by the endpoint and then protocol version then there is a content type it can be application json or any other content type then there is authorization to protect the api we have got authorization in place which we have to 
provide here the value of the authorization so in this case we are using basic authorization but in case of the json tokens jw tokens we have to use bearer authorization then there is user agent accept and then uh, there are different types of uh, basically the headers that we can use followed by the empty line and then followed by the actual body of the request then on the, when the response comes, this is how it looks so in the response we have got the protocol that was used and then there is a code so server can respond with various codes starting with uh, like 100 and then going up to 500 501 uh, in that series so 201 means that server created a resource then followed by the headers and then finally the body of the response the get request is also similar only difference is that in the get normally we don't send the any body so there is a blank line and then there is a response from the server here but in get request we we can get the response from the server in the json format so in this case we have got this json data as a response then in the http there are various methods previously we have just seen get and post but there are other methods like put patch delete connect trace head options so get is used to get the data post is used to create a data create a new record and then put is used to replace the existing record patch is used to modify the existing record and then delete is used to delete the record of the resource and then there are other options head trace this uh, methods which are not quite frequently used the next uh, important concept is uh, media type so the data that is transferred is classified in different categories for example if you are sending json data normally the content type is application slash json but there are various other types like application slash pdf if it is a simple uh, html form that is being sent to the server then we use this ww form url encoded then there is xml chip mpeg mp4 this is used to send the audio video files and then uh, for the photos we use image slash jpeg if you want to upload the files this uh, particular content type is normally used multi-part slash form data and then uh, there is this headers so we have already seen what headers are but for each header has got a specific uh, feature basically so you need you don't need to know, know like all the headers but important headers uh, you need to know like content type and authorization etc then in the cookies uh, cookies is uh, another header which is basically the main purpose being the authentication advertising personal customized experience for the web users so these are the main reasons why we use cookies and it can be of these types same side cookies third party cookies session cookie persistent cookie secure cookie http only cookies homey cookie and then there is a cookie attributes as well like domain path etc then there is http status code so all the status codes that starts with one are informational then the ones that we start with the two are successful codes then the ones that start with three are redirection related codes then the ones that started the four are client errors and then one starts with the five are server errors so for example if it is 2xxs so for example 200 okay that means the uh, uh, the request was successful 201 means the resource was created and so on and so forth then there is a 400 bad request 404 this is very common where client has a request a resource that doesn't exist on the server and then there is a 500 error which is internal server error so server is not able to process the request then it will throw this error i think that's it so if you know this http error codes http uh, particular forums get post put delete patch then i think uh, you should be fine working with postman as well as chmeter and then Jenkins so Jenkins is another important concept uh, because if you want to uh, use uh, CI CD continuous integration continuous delivery or the pipelines in your project then Jen without Jenkins or any other uh, CI server it's not possible so CI server like Jenkins is very important uh, because we can implement the CI CD and uh, what happens is that whenever a new version of the application is released 
we don't need to kick off the tests manually basically we can use the webhook and then that webhook will automatically launch the tests okay and that way we can reduce the time to run the tests as well so basically we can use the ci cd using jenkins and uh, what we have to do here is that we have to first of all execute the commands manually uh, on the terminal and once we know the commands that we want to execute we can give those commands to jenkins and then jenkins can run the tests on the server or on the cloud and then finally we have got messaging queue kafka or the rabbit queue so in the kafka is uh it's uh, just similar to the messaging queue another messaging queue from apache but it is based on the publisher subscriber model other uh, messaging queues are based upon the jms in kafka order of messages is maintained it can have multiple consumers and it is distributed also the message retention policy is also different from other messaging queues so i think that's it uh, if you work around these concepts uh, that i have explained in this particular video i think you should be uh, ready to crack any kind of automation testing interview thank you for watching